Okay, hello everyone. Um, thank you for joining for our next webinar. And uh, we are here with Amanda from Vonage, and we're gonna learn about uh, appointment scheduling, and this is very exciting for uh, all of us. So thank you for joining, and I'm just gonna pass it on to Amanda, who can tell a lot more about this topic than me. Um, Absolutely. Thank you so much for the kind introduction. It's very good to be back here. I'm not sure if you were here in my previous workshop that we learned about chatbots, but today we're going to learn about building an appointment scheduler using Node, Firebase, and the Vonage APIs. So if you're ready, let's get to it. Um, just a quick introduction about me. My name is Amanda Cavallaro. I'm a developer advocate. I work at Vonage. I'm based in the UK, more specifically in London, but I'm originally from Brazil. And I'm actually speaking to you from Brazil today. I'm out here visiting family and working remotely. And about the team where I work for, um, I work for the developer relations team. So we love to connect with developers to support and to educate you how to use our communication APIs. So we are out there in all social media we can imagine. We are live on Twitch. We are always uh, on Twitter, um, Stack Overflow. So we are out there and ready to answer your questions. So if you have any questions throughout this workshop or any of the other tutorials, blog posts, videos, or anything you can find using our APIs, we're more than happy to help you out. And if you have any questions you'd like to shoot us an email, you can talk to us at community at um, You are very welcome to uh, chat to me in the chat here or wherever you're looking from. The moderators of this event are going to forward your questions to me. Um, I'll try to answer most of them by the end, but if I can take some, maybe you're stuck um, whilst following this workshop, so maybe I can help you out uh, to get there. So let's just see what this workshop is about today. What's the end product we're going to get to today? So here on the left, I have my real-time database on Firebase, and on the right, I have my web app. So we choose the slot. So this is a slot, right? It could be for a vaccine, for um, a gym at your building, or any appointment that you would like you would like to schedule. So for this one, we are going to choose a date within June, maybe June thirteenth, and then it's going to be. I don't know, at 12, 5 p.m. Then we add the phone number that you're going to uh, receive that message that is going to be use one of our SMS or messages API, one of our Vonage APIs that can send SMS for you. And once we add the phone number and click book slot, pay attention here on the left, you can see, oops, I forgot to get my um, application up and running. It's very important to do NPM start. <laughs> so now it's running on port 3000. And if I get back here to the application and go back to the previous page. Okay, so now I'm going to, let me just choose a different time to uh, 1210. Okay, and then we're going to click to book slot. You can see here on the left that it was updated and we can see that a code was also sent and I'm not sure if you can see my webcam or if it's very small for you, but you can see I just received an SMS, uh, the same message that you found there on my phone as well. So if I were to um, delete this appointment, I, I want to cancel this appointment, I would save this slot go back one page and then here on the bottom part where we have code i would click to remove slot and if you pay attention on the left you can see that this slot is being removed from the database so if anyone else would like to book that appointment here again uh, that would now be available to others so as i said we're going to do all of this using a javascript node uh, the Vonage APIs and Firebase. So if you're ready, let's go. I had also a video recorded here because you never know when you're live if anything could go wrong, but uh, everything went right. So let's go to the next slide. And if you would like to see the code 
uh, to follow the code. We have the code available on GitHub. Our moderators are going to share it, the links that I'm talking about right now with you. I'm not sure if it's in the comments or if it's on the Discord server you have, but we have the code available on GitHub. We also have this written tutorial. So I have previously written all of the steps of what I'm going to say, maybe some of them more in depth, others um, I go a bit more faster because I just have one hour to talk to you. So if maybe you would like some more time to get back to some part, you have the written tutorial as well. Um, and um, as I said, if you have any questions, you can chat to me. I'll keep an eye here and the moderators are always talking to me. So let's get to it. Uh, I'm not sure if you ever used Firebase before. Let me know in the comments if you have ever used it before, if you have ever built any projects or anything. So Firebase is a backend as a service mobile and web application development platform. It provides you with hosted backend services, such as a real-time database that we're using today, cloud storage, authentication, crash reporting, remote configuration, and hosting for static files. Um, it uses the serverless programming. That means that we only pay for what we, we use, and there is no need to fix to stick to a fixed bandwidth plan, regardless of how many resources we use. So let's get started with setting up Firebase. To set up Firebase, we are going to um, go to the Firebase console. That's also one of the links that I gave to our moderators to share with you. We have the Firebase console, but if you just go and go do a Google search Firebase console, you're going to find it. Um, and then in there, you click to create a new project. And if you don't have an account, you haven't used it before, um, you can create an account using your Google account or any other accounts that you have available. Um, and once you are logged in and authenticated, you can click to create a new project, click to continue, choose if you're going to use analytics or not. I will not use uh, in this tutorial. Then you wait for the project to be created. And then maybe this part I could show on the Firebase console. So it's a bit more visual. So here I'm on the real time database. If I click here on the left, I choose the project that we're going to use. So I just created this project, for example. Then I go to project overview, project settings. Here we can find all of the settings that we have. Then I have usage and billing. And for this project, we're going to use, um, let me see if I can find here, it's a bit small. Okay. So for this one, we're going to use um, Blaze and it has to be linked to a billing account. Um, you can see that I have been using this project for quite some time now. There's no cost involved. Um, it's just the tier that we're going to use is the pay as you go. I just clicked here so you can see there is one that which is Spark, which uh, there are no costs involved. And this one is pay as you go. And at any time you can change uh, these and don't worry about that. Also, uh, if you're, I don't know if the cloud somehow makes you feel nervous or anything, as soon as we finish this project, you can always shut it down. So don't worry, there's not going to be any costs involved. So you choose the usage and billing uh, for your project. Um, and then you set the Google Cloud resource location in the project settings. For me, it's not going to show because I already created this, but one of the steps that you have when you're creating is to choose where your data is going to live. So make sure you choose that as well. Okay, so that's about setting up Firebase from the console from, for creating the project, all the resources, all the cloud resources we're going to use. And then from the terminal on your computer, I'm not sure which terminal you use, if it's the terminal that comes with your computer or I, I term, there's another one hash something. So whichever one that you use, you're going to open that to install Firebase. So we start by installing the Firebase tools by doing NPM or Yarn, not sure which one you're using. Uh, and then we install the Firebase tools, and then you have the process to log into Firebase. You do you write the command Firebase login, and what that does is it's going to open a separate window, just like when you're using OAuth uh, authentication to login. 
So it's going to ask you to um, authenticate that's you. And once that page is complete, everything is authenticated in there. From your console, you're going to be authenticated and now you can use Firebase in there. And I'm not sure if you're using ZSH, but sometimes there is a problem even though you installed it. And I've seen that problem a couple of times. I use a MacBook, so I just wanted to add a quick slide on this. If anything happens, you can run an alias from your terminal. And there is also this great Stack Overflow um, answer that explains that to you. But not everyone runs through that error. So I just wanted to quickly add this one for the ones that do for, for the ones who do. Okay, so let's understand what we're going to use. We're going to use the Firebase real-time database. As you could see in the very beginning of this uh, workshop, when I, where I was showing you the solution we're going to build today, you could see that the moment that I clicked to book a slot, it would update in real time. And the moment that I was uh, removing the slot, it would also update in real time. Therefore, the name real time database. So it makes it possible for us to store and sync data between the users, as the name says, real time. So people can access their data via the web or mobile, and it helps the user collaboration. Whenever we update data in the real-time database, the data is stored in the cloud and it notifies all the interested devices. And the first thing that we're going to do is to import the database JSON file we're going to use for this workshop. There is one example that I added um, to GitHub. Uh, I think I called it myappointments.json, but I also have an example here. So what you would do is you uh, go on your computer and you create a file with the name of the uh, database that you're going to use. In my case, I gave it the name of my appointments. Then we're going to create the first part, which is the date of the appointment and the user ID that contains that code that is going to be used in case we would like to delete it. So I just started it with three um, appointments that I created. They are just created by me for this appointment booker that I'm creating. Um, as you can see, some of them are in the past, so maybe we could add some of them for June or July. Um, and then as soon as you're happy with this, you would save this file somewhere in your computer. Then I'm changing here the page to go back to the Firebase console. Uh, I'm going to click on my real-time database. And in my example here, I already imported it, but if you would like to import it from your computer, so you just created that file, you click here, import JSON, and then you're going to see uh, one of these upload, upload pages that open for you. You click to import and everything is going to be imported here and it's going to show up just like this one that you're seeing here. So that's how we're going to have the initial slots and also the ones that we're going to add and remove. So that was our very first step and it should look something like that. And then we add the database rules. These rules, they determine who can access your database, how the indexes are built and how your data is structured. So from, if I go back here, from the uh, real-time database, you can see there is a second tab here on the top called rules. So you'll be, you'll be taken to a screen that allows you to edit your rules. So um, you can see here that I have the read and write information. Uh, I also have where my appointment scheduler is indexed. It's indexed on the date index that we have. And once I'm happy with all of this, I click to publish. Um, I think because the page is a bit smaller, we can see it. But once you're happy with this, you click to publish. Mine are already here. You can also click to monitor the rules. Basically, this is everything that you have about the rules. Okay, now let's get back to the presentation. And it's time to set up. So what you could do here is to uh, git clone. Uh, I'm not sure if you know how to use git, but you could git clone the project from GitHub. So you could either go to the um, 
to determine and do git clone and the URL of the of the project that I gave you, or you could download it as a zip file. It's also one of the options that you have in the drop down, or you could create an account on your sorry, not an account. You could create a folder on your own machine and then follow all the steps. So we would do something like create the folder on your computer, change the directory to that folder. Then we would, I'm just going to switch here the screen um, to the, yeah, you can see that to the IDE. So what we would do is do an NPM init. This command prompts you to add information about the project. Then after that, we would install the dependencies that we're going to use for this project. Let me just have my package JSON here. So I have the dependencies that we use here. So I would do something along the lines of npm install or npm i. And then I would add all of these dependencies that you can see there. So I have the Vonage server SDK, dot, dot env, uh, UUID, Express, Firebase admin, and Firebase functions. So these are the dependencies that we're going to use. But if you're using the cloned project, all you would have to do is npm install. And then you would have all of them available for you in your project. And then secondly, we would initialize Firebase. We type, I'm going back to my, uh, to my terminal here. So we would type Firebase init. And since we already created this project before in the dashboard, if I do Firebase init, you can click to use an existing project, which is going to prompt you to choose which of the projects that you created and something interested, interesting to know is that you have the name of the project and you have the project ID. So you see the name of the project first and then the project ID in parentheses. This is interesting because at least me, when I create many prototypes, sometimes I give all of them similar names and I get confused. So it's good for you to see the, um, the project ID. So you, it's easy for you to know exactly which project you're using. Um, and then let's get to the HTML part. So we have the Firebase part both now installed in your um, Node application and you also have it created on the cloud. So the Firebase part is set. Then we have to use, uh, we have to create our view where we're going to have the content, basically this page here that you're seeing. So we have a title. Uh, we have one input. I'm not sure if, you, if you've seen this input before. It's called input type and the type is called date time dash local. And just by using that input, it gives me all that, it gives us all that UI there. So I didn't have to use any dependencies for date time. So this approach is not as robust as using a date time library, as there can be some inconsistencies, but it works for the purpose of this tutorial. And something else that I added is that, so if I put here uh, that the appointment is at 12 and 10 p.m., you can see that there's no problem. But if I put at 11, you can see there, there's um, a cross saying it doesn't work. 12, 13, 14 doesn't work, but 15 works. So I also added one more um, required um, property to this HTML tag. It's called step that I said that I only accept appointments every five minutes. So depending on what you're doing, maybe it's for a gym or it's for a vaccine, it, it's good to um, set when the appointments can start, how long they can be, and how often you want them. If you want them just at like every hour, every five minutes, every 10 minutes. So all of that using this uh, HTML tag. Uh, and I guess that's it for the HTML. Oh, and also I added some validity. Maybe I could actually show you the code for the HTML, not only the view. So I'm going to open here the HTML file, it's in my public uh, index HTML file. So you can see um, that we have the input uh, with the step 300, which means every five minutes. And I also have when the very first slot can be uh, scheduled. So on the 1st of June, 
until the 30th of the of December. And this is very important because if you put this wrong, and I did on the last workshop, because as you could see, I was using dates for May and I was trying to book appointments in June and it wasn't working. So when you start, when you finish, the steps make this required. And I also created a validity span that this doesn't validate the backend. It validates the CSS that I created. So as I'm talking about CSS, I'm going to quickly open the styles file here. Um, and you can see here that I created um, two uh, inputs that say uh, when it's valid or not, it's going to add that cross that you see or the green tick. And now that I'm talking about colors, I realized that in the beginning of this presentation, I didn't do a self description of myself and I'm very sorry about that. So I'm just going to do that very quickly right now. Uh, so my name is Amanda. I'm a Latin woman. Um, right now I am wearing a black t-shirt in my background. There is a table and two pictures on the wall. I also have a long brown hair. Sorry for missing that. Um, so I just have a very simple CSS here. Um, I didn't want to make something too like shiny, too beautiful. It was just to show you as simple as I could how to create an appointment scheduler. But then with the foundation that you get from this workshop, you can go and do something more robust, more incredible for uh, your users, wh whoever they are. If this is only for um, a project that you're learning or for an actual product that you would like to use with your customers. So that's for the HTML. And that's how it looks. Um, and then, as I said, I also went uh, through the CSS very quickly. So for this demonstration web app, uh, we'll add some styling to center the contents on the page and also display a, a red cross in case the input is invalid and the green tick in case it's valid. And all of this is living in a folder, a public folder styles and a styles.css file. And then we create a .env file. As you could see, one of the dependencies that I used was the .env. If I go to my .env.example, you can see the uh, environment variables that we're going to use. We have the Firebase database URL uh, that can be found here. We copy and paste that. Then we have the Vonage API key and the Vonage API secret that if you were to, let me just uh, show the URL here. Um, one second. Um, um, there's this little thing from this tool that's right in front of where I want to click. Um, one second. How can I open my top tab? Anyway, there's this website called dashboard.nexmo.com. Uh, if I can just move this little thing, I can show you. Um, okay, it's a bit hard for me to open a page here. Um, let me just remove this from side by side. Sorry about that. I'll just remove this from side by side. So I can show you. Yes, I got it. So we have the Vonage API dashboard. This is how it should look like. Uh, and then in here we have the Vonage API key that I can copy and paste it there. And I have also the Vonage API secret. We're going to need those to use the Vonage APIs to send SMS messages, uh, the ones that I showed you on my phone. So these are the Vonage API key, the Vonage API secret, uh, the number that you're going to send the number from. So you know when you receive... Let me see if I still have the message here that I received on my phone. When you receive the message on your phone and then it says like who it's from, the number uh, it's from. So it would be from this number that you add here. And sometimes when you receive messages, it doesn't just say the phone number. Sometimes it's a business. So you could also add uh, uh, characters here. Depending on the country uh, where you are, there are some regulations that you cannot add just characters. You have to add a phone number here. I believe the US is one of these countries and some others. Um, but in the UK, for instance, we could just add Vonage as the Vonage from number. And then the Vonage to number is the number that's going to receive that slot. So probably that's your own phone number because you book a slot in your own phone number and you receive that. 
Um, and then um, for the purpose of this workshop, because we are sending this from uh, a phone number that we created, we could also um, go here in the Vonage dashboard and on the left there is numbers. You could purchase a number uh, and then you could use this virtual number uh, to be the one sending the messages for you, uh, to you. So this is how the .env, dot, uh, .env file looks like. I created the .env.example, but then what you do is you copy and paste it to a .env and add your actual uh, keys because I have my own keys. I'm not going to open that file for you, but this is it, this has everything that you would need. So that's uh, what we have for our .env file. Um, yeah, so I guess I went through all of them and where you can find them. And then you set up the Vonage account. Let me show you how to do that. So you would go to this website called dashboard.nextmo.com slash sign up. I also shared that with our moderators here if they'd like to share. Um, so dashboard.nextmo.com slash sign up. Then you can create your free account. And for the workshop today, the people who are watching, I know that this video is also going to be available uh, for posterity, but uh, it's just available, I guess, today and maybe in the next few days for uh, the people following this workshop live. We're giving away a coupon of 10 euros for you to use our APIs, not only for this workshop, but if you'd like to try the other APIs, maybe with verified to factor authentication video, um, excuse me, the video is actually another platform. So if you'd like to send messages, to try a chatbot with calls, you can use that code for that as well. So the way it would work is we, you, we have here this code. We would copy and paste, uh, also add it to the, to, with our moderators. So you would go to the dashboard and then in the quick links, we have billing, coupons. You would add that uh number there that uh sorry the series of characters that string so 22 h s a k a z and then you click to submit and then on the left you can see that your balance is going to go up because now you have more credits to try our api so whatever you do here sending messages receiving messages it's all going to be free because you have these free credits so that's exciting and then let's get to the application logic So we added all the dependencies to, to the project. They are there, but now we have to actually use it in our server.js file. Um, so we can use to send SMS messages with Vonage. We have the SMS API and we have the messages API. I'm going to switch the screen here. And you can see that in the script folder, I added one example showing how to send it with the messages API and with the SMS API. They're both very similar. The code is all the same. The only part that uh, I'm changing is how we can send uh, the SMS message. So this is the only block of code that should change. Um, and also maybe if I could go a little bit um, in more in depth in the messages API. The SMS API, as the name says, it allows you to send SMS messages, but with the uh, messages API, you can also use um, this application, for instance, I have here. So the type of message that I'm going to send is SMS, but maybe I would also like this to be text, or I would like this to be with Facebook or uh, Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp or Viber or different social chat apps. So the SMS APIs has also these social chat apps that you can use. Uh, I'm going to show today the, the example using the SMS API. I'm going back to my presentation. So what we would do is we create a server.js file and then we require um, the dependencies that we're going to use. So we have .env, Express, uh, Firebase Admin and Vonage. Uh, then we also need a service account that is going to come from your Google Cloud account. So if I go back to my uh, project overview, I have project settings, I have service accounts, 
and then this here has my uh, my private key so it would be generated there it, when i click here it downloads a file that i can add to my i mean so it i would add it to my project it looks something like this but it wouldn't come with this name service account key.json i renamed it to here so it would be easier for us to see especially because for each person following this workshop would have a different name so that file that was generated i renamed it to service account json and the example is just so you can see the example and how it looks like and then from this file here i would um, require this service account key uh, file so moving on, we would then initialize Firebase. Uh, so we initialize that with the credentials that are coming from that service account and the database URL. I'm switching back here. But you can also find this here in the Firebase admin SDK. So you can find the uh, database URL here. All this code that you're seeing there that I just added the uh, initializes Firebase, I just came here in the service account, I copied and I pasted it. And because it's using var, um, I actually wanted to use um, const. So I changed it to that. So you can see here, instead of uh, var service account, I'm using const service account. So that's where we are up to now. And then we have uh, the reference to the database that we're using. I'm going back to the database and then I'm going to click here on the, um, where is it? Firebase real-time database. So you can see here that the name of our collection is my appointment. So it's the reference to the code that we have here. Uh, so yeah, here's the name that we have there. If you gave it another name, you would have to change it here. And then we have the code to send the SMS message with the with the Vonage API. It gets the API key and the API secrets that you added to your um, .env file. And I'm using process.env um, to um, so I'm using this process.env. That basically what it does is it's getting the environment variables that you added to the .m file and bringing it here and then dot the name that you added uh, that you gave to that variable that lives there so we have the vonage api key and the vonage api secret excuse me i went to the next slide by mistake and then we're saying that the static files are going to live in a public folder i'm going to switch to my ide so you can see that i have a public folder containing my static files i have uh, a I never know how to say this word if it's favicon or favicon. Help me out in the comment. So I have uh, this icon that you can see at the top of the page, the style CSS and the HTML file. I'm going back here. And then uh, we're going to use express.json, express URL encoded. Um, and then we're going to get started with the um, get date time. If I go back here to the code, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, maybe if I can show you the example that we have in my appointments. If you see here, let me just make this a little bit bigger. You can see that when we're saving the date using that HTML property, it gets the year, month, day, and then there is a T, and then it has the time. So what we are going to start doing here is we're going to create a function called get that date time, and then we're going to uh, get the slot that splits into that T. And from that slot, we're going to get the date and the time. So that's what that, fun that function is doing. And then we're going to um, create this app.post to create the appointment in which we're getting the phone number from the input, we're getting the slot. Uh, and as I said, we're getting the date and the time from that slot using that function that we created. And in the next slides, I'm going to show you how we're going to check if that slot is available. So maybe that slot is already taken, someone else took it, uh, how we add that information to the database, how we send the information to the user. So all of that is in the appointment, the create appointment. And then I'm going to show you another piece of code, which is to cancel the appointment. 
So let's talk about the check slot availability. This function validates if a slot is available by checking if the slot already exists in the database. Let me go into the code here. Um, let me catch the first one. So check if available. Let me just make this a bit smaller. Okay, so check if available. So we are querying the ref.order by child date. So the queries are allowed to order one key at a time. We have previously defined our index via the index on on the Firebase rules for better performance. And then we make use of the dot once value to listen for exactly one event of the value. And then we stop listening. So that's what we're doing here on line 39. Um, and then if that slot is available, we're going to loop through um, all the information that we have there in our Firebase um, database, Firebase real-time database, everything rhymes. And um, if that slot is not there, we're going to make it available. Okay, so it's available. So that's what this function is. It's checking if it's available. Uh, then we have the following a piece of code that is add the appointment to the database. Now that we check that it's available, let's actually add it uh, to the database. So we have add to the database. You can see that it's using UUID v4. Uh, and I thought on how I would go about this because at first I was just creating um, just a random string for people to add because this is, a, this is a demonstration. But when you create a random random strings, there is a high chance that we might use the same. Uh, it, it could generate the same uh, string twice. So to try and reduce the the inconsistencies that we could find, even if it's a demonstration, I decided to use these dependency that what it does, it creates a very long string. So if I were to show you here, um, I actually deleted that one that we created, but if I were to create another one, and I remember that I had the page side by side, but I closed it so it would be easier for us. Let me just get this back. Yeah, so if I were to just book a slot again right now at 1220 and book my slot, I don't have my app running anymore. <laughs> Let me get the terminal to run. Uh, the thing is blocking me again. Can I open my terminal? Uh, <laughs> I'm having trouble opening my terminal. I would really love to move the thing um, so I can show. Okay, let me just not make this full screen so I can see my terminal. Ah, it's still up there. Okay, this is a problem. I don't remember the, the command. So I'll just open the actual terminal on the terminal and then I'll CD to desktop and then I'll CD to the Firebase works. It's uppercase Firebase workshop. Um, and then which folder am I in? Of blog messages, CD blog messages. Okay, so that's okay. I couldn't use the one from the ID, but I can use the one on my computer, always dealing with adversities. Um, then what I would do is to npm start. And then it runs on port 3000. Okay, so now I can get this up and running just 3,000, no slash appointment. Uh, okay, so getting back to the example on what I was saying before. Uh, so I would book an appointment, let's say 11.40 a.m. Choosing a phone number, book a slot. And now if I go to the Firebase, you can see that it was created in here. And this is the code that we received. I also received an SMS message right now. So I just received that SMS message with the same code I'm showing here on my webcam. So that's a way longer code and the chances of um, this being the same as others is very low. Um, going back to the code here. 
Okay, so then what I'm doing is I'm using um, this Firebase method here that I say that reference the child and I'm going to pass the code. And inside of that, I'm going to set a new date and the slot, uh, sorry, a new date and a new user ID containing the code that we generated using this UUID dependency. And then return the code from here. So that's what we have for adding the appointment to the database. And then I had one example here showing that also in case something went wrong, but it went right right now. And then finally, we have the send SMS to the user. Once that slot is reserved, we check it, it's available, it's added to the database, uh, an SMS confirmation is sent back to the user with the message. Let me see the exact message I received here on my um, so messages because you can change this text right we're creating this so mine is booked at time on the date please save this code the name of the code in case you'd like to cancel your appointment so it contains that message and if i go on the code here you can see that message being shown here please use that code and then we use the vonage.message.send sms messages which with the number from so the vonage from number the to number and the text and in case it goes well we have the message sent successfully here and in case it goes wrong it's uh, you also have the message fail failure here uh, and then after we have all these functions in here we finalize the business logic uh, let me go back. We finalize the business logic uh, by saying if it's available, we await and check if uh, call the check if available function. If it's available, we're going to add to the database, send the SMS to the user, or else uh, we let the user know that that slot is already taken, so they have to choose a different slot. Now we're going to go to the second part, second and final part about canceling the appointment. So we're going to go to the cancel appointment post request that we're going to build. So let's create the slash cancel appointment endpoint handling the post request for canceling an appointment from the database by using a code provided by the user that they received upon scheduling the appointments, the one using the UUID, UUID right, uh, dependency. So this is how it would look like um let me go back to the ide so we receive that code uh that the user is going to add back to the uh, on the ui and then we call the function remove slot from db passing that code and then we use the firebase method saying uh, reference.child.co.remove so uh so the entire node that we have here would be removed would you like to see that in real time? Because I don't have them side by side. You're, you're going to have to wait for me to go back and forth. Um, so let me just go here. I'm going to paste the code. I click to remove slot and I'm going to try to go back as fast as you can. So maybe you can see it's being removed. So I click to remove and you can see here the entire node is being removed. So that's what we're doing here. And then we say that th this slot has been removed. So this is what we have for cancel the appointment. And once I just this final one that we have here, we have the app dot listen. And if I have my terminal still open here, yeah, I still have it. So you can see that. Let me just clear. Once I do, I made this bigger for you. Once I do npm start and it gets started, you can see it says I run on port 3000, which is the port um, that I chose for this project. That's what it's doing here. Um, and I just set the ports to be 3000 here. And on my package.json, um, I let the this project to know that uh, once I do npm start, it's going to start the script from server, uh, from the file script slash server SMS API. So depending on the name that you're using, maybe you're trying the SMS API or the messages API, it's going to be a bit different there. But you could also run the same project by typing on your on your terminal um, node script uh, slash server smsapi.js. So that's how it all works. 
uh, yes, yeah, so as I said, I went a bit faster in this part. So we listen on that port that we set there. And in the end, we can test it all out. Uh, I guess I showed this a couple of times, but because I added the test it out, let's just do it one more time. Now that we have our app up and running, um, let's just do it. So uh, it's going to be on the 8th of June at 2.44. You can see it doesn't accept it to 45, so it accepts it. Um, let's see what happens though. If I want it to be at 244, I have this thing on my UI that says it's not valid. Uh, and then I add my phone number, but will it allow me to book my slot? Let's try. No, it doesn't allow me. So I have to add uh, an exact hour, not exact, um, like one every five minutes. So I click to book slot. I receive the SMS here on my phone and you can see one more new one was created. And if I click, um, so I copy here um, the code that we received. And if I paste it here to remove slot, it says that this slot has been removed and it's being removed now. So this is how uh, the entire app works. So we tested it out. Um, and because it's saying like test it out if you weren't following with me like if you were creating everything you just created all these functions right now what you would do is to make sure that you installed all the dependencies and do an npm start that i just showed you um how it starts the server so as a conclusion today you saw how to be, build an appointment scheduler demo application now you can go ahead and add fancier styling and other functionalities you can take what you learned here to create many appointment schedulers maybe for a gym vaccination or just let your creativity flow um, and if you would like to hear more about us, uh, we have our webpage at developer.vonage.com. We are Vonage Dev on Twitter or Vonage Dev on YouTube. I create a bunch of videos. If you're interested in, uh, in Firebase, I have created like four or five videos uh, with cool um, workshops for you to go through. We also have, we are on Twitch as Vonage Devs. Uh, we have our blog post that actually is not .learn.vonage.com anymore. We changed, if you try to access it, it still redirects, but now it's developer.vonage.com slash blog. We're also on LinkedIn. And if you'd like to connect with me, I shared with the moderators my contact. Uh, so I'm on LinkedIn as Amanda Cavallaro, uh, Twitter, AMD Cavallaro, double L. And I also have my blog posts at developer.vonage.com slash blog slash author slash Amanda Cavallaro. Uh, and just to remember, if, if I went too fast in that slide showing the coupon, if you would like to add that coupon, you just copy here. You go back to the, do I still have it open? Probably not, to the dashboard. And then you click to redeem it. I also shared with the moderators um, a blog post on how to apply the Vonage coupon code. Um, so it's easier for you um, to visually see how to do it because there are some more steps or others than the one that I showed it very quickly here. And um, I'm going to be here. I have access to the Discord server of these events. So I'm going to be uh, hanging out there to answer some of the questions. Uh, I'm not sure if the moderators have some questions for me as well. I finished my presentation some minutes earlier, so I can cater for questions. But if you'd like to ask them elsewhere or after this workshop, uh, just make sure you reach out to me. And thank you very much for your time and for all the uh, team at showco.ini for having me today. Thank you so much for the great webinar and uh, if anyone has any questions just uh, let us know in the youtube comments or just send us a message message on discord we are always there and um, you can watch this back on youtube in a few hours and we have all the links in the comments so you can check out all the information if you missed a bit um, and thank you so much again for the great webinar amanda um thank you and so hopefully much. see you soon on the discord as well yes i'll be there Thank you. Um, see you. See you soon, everyone. Bye. Bye bye. So I'm just trying to stop the streaming, but yeah.